This is a presentation of RBT Entertainment. This isn't about the dead, it's about the living. It's about my mother. It's about my sister. It's about my wife. It's about the 14 years it took me to go from undesirable to un-goddamn deniable. You know, they say all men are created equal, but you look at me and you look at Small Joe, and you can see that statement is not true. Because I'm better than you, and you know it. In the back, there are men and women Seasoned professionals, dues paid in full, gunning to be the best. I'll always light the way, and all you have to do is let me in. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> the cream of the crop, but it doesn't matter. Hi, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the WrestleCast, presented by RBT Entertainment on Podomatic, Spotify, YouTube, and wherever else we find is fine out of recording. We are talking about professional wrestling, both in the mainstream, in the independent scene, live on the Twitch.tv channel. My name is Matt Ajay, that is TWK. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm TWK of TWK Reviews, and welcome to another, well, I guess a bridge in this case, edition of the WrestleCast. It's going to be a short one is what it's going to be. It's going to be a short, short version. Short, short, sweet to the point. Uh, no Eclipse, we're jumping right into the into the thick of it because we got a preview, a pay-per-view, an AEW pay-per-view, mind you. Uh, for those wondering, Shintai Co. will not be joining us uh, weather uh, in the, in the uh, rainy slash thundery slash... It might lose the power at halfway through. That kind of stuff. Kind of situation. We will see him next week. We will be reviewing uh, the show at another one-hour special. Because why not? By the way, thank you to Mike Shell. 43, uh, 43 months on the short, short version. <laughs> yeah. Tier 1 sub, we thank you for that, obviously. I'm uh, kind of, uh, kind of, you know distracted uh there's a new ngttwf world champion and he's a part of the future which is the faction i'm a part of and there are people in there who are still saying fuck the future and i'm just going in there going and there you go uh so shin will join us next week as per usual at this point we may as well jump into the thick of it by uh going uh, through uh, this situation by talking about aew dynamite we're gonna do that right off the bat so we have a little bit of time for news because i don't know how the fuck long we're gonna take on this by the way t-dub has a poll going in the chat uh who will be the mystery person in the casino battle royale uh the choice is right now daniel bryan danielson the big Oz, nick 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 fucking gage nick all this or the denver broncos and the vote right now is actually surprisingly Nick Aldis, the uh, NWA World Champion, uh, Daniel Bryan, and the big and uh, Paul White uh, tied in second place. Er, early days, I, I would assume, for that. We'll check that in a couple of minutes. While well, you folks get yourself settled in for an hour, and then uh, we do the AEW. Speaking of that, double or nothing. You want to do this there, Tina? Double or nothing. Jacksonville, Florida Daily's Place sold the F out this evening for Dynamite, by the way. Full sold out. David Capacity sold out. Sold the F out. They got the, the stage seats back. I'll drink to that, folks. It's going to be a good show tonight. Abs absolutely. I thought you were going to talk more. I'm trying to crack open, open my can of bubbly. Uh, yeah, I, lime, mean, uh, well, I mean, with all water. the fans back, it's Easy also going to be interesting to finally see a wrestling show without any fans, without any wrestlers at ringside. No social distancing, every butt in every seat kind of stuff. Hopefully vaccinated. Well, if you're listening to this and you have not gotten vaccinated yet and you have the ability to, uh, please do so. Forget what you think of the vaccine. For This is not a political thing. This is literally a... a one or two j two jabs, you're healthy. You don't die in in in, fi in five months or whatever. 
I speak words. Let's move on. Serena Deeb and Riho will open the entire goddamn thing up in the buy-in portion, the pre-show. Uh, Serena Deeb versus Riho for the National Wrestling Alliance World's Women's Championship. Serena Deeb is the uh, incumbent champion. It's kind of interesting because both of these women are AEW contracted wrestlers. Technically speaking, of course. And it, I'm just surprised that Serena Deeb has had the title this long because you'd think the NWA would want one of their world titles on someone from the NWA. I get the feeling they're just happy to have a, a, a television presence on TNT. But soon to be TBS, I, of course. But then again, we're not that far. We're we're looking too far into the future. There's that word Nevertheless, again. I expect Deeb to retain. And I, I, I suspect that will be the case, but it will be an awesome match nonetheless. Uh, then I go right back down to the card. There, there's no, uh, there's no specific uh, order when, when it comes to this. We're just, I'm just going from bottom to top uh, with, uh, and uh, so we're just going to start with the tag team title match: Young Bucks defending uh, def- uh, defending against John Wild Thing, Moxley, and Eddie Fuck You Kingston, because that's what he does. He he looks at you, says "Fuck you," beats you up. Uh, essentially, yes, and I. And putting my proverbial cash on Moxley and Kingston to walk away with the gold. Really? All right. Cool. 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 Uh, stay well, I don't go- expect them to have too long of a ring. I expect them to either drop them back to the Bucks after a little while, or drop them to a new team sometime later on. I I don't see them holding the belts for too too long. Maybe face pop. Maybe. Possibly. I'm thinking Young Bucks simply because, I mean, they're trying to build the, the championship brain of the elite. But I could see I could see Box and Kingston winning it, to be to be fair. To be fair, I, I could see that. Uh, next up, Sting, Darby Allen taking on Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. This is Sting's first in-arena in live in-ring matchup since his last one back in uh, 2014, 15? It would have been 2015. 2015, Night of Champions. Yeah, because he made his return in 2014 to promote 2K15. Yeah, and he returned. Yeah, so it is 2015. Seven years. Now, if you want to take... Uh, now, of course, he's, take, he's taken bump in, the bumps in AEW Revolution earlier this year, but live in front of a crowd like that with no double takes, no second takes or third takes... I get the feeling they're going to put over Sting and Darby just for for it, but I'm like, there's a part of me that says they're going to put over Sky and Page. I honestly think they could go either way. This one's yeah. predict for me. Yeah, I, I see. I see both. I, I honestly, it's a it's a flip of the coin. Both both are uh, both are acceptable outcomes. I was thinking of the word there. I think I think it derped there. Stadium Stampede, The Pinnacle, MJF, Wardlow, Sean Spears, Cash Wheeler, and uh, Dax Harwood taking on Inner Circle, Jericho, Hager, Guevara, Santana, and Ortiz. Uh, Of course, if the Inner Circle lose, they're done. They're split. Does Barmy think that this could be the way to write off the Inner Circle as a team? Because they have been around for a long time, but on the other hand, they could also going maybe you're 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 feeling a rubber on this one they could and that's what i'm wondering i'm wondering if they're doing this because if the pinnacle win they're automatically set up as the top heel group except there's also the elite this is yeah this is where it's one of those things i'm like ew what do you do you have your you have your you have face inner circle which is not bad you, there's a you have a way to push Sammy Guevara even more, which is obviously the plan. You want to build Sammy Guevara, and of course uh, Santana and Ortiz, and of course Jake Hager. But uh, at the same time, Pinnacle as a top heel faction, or at the very least another top heel faction, making two with the with the super elite. You might think it's too much on the heel side, but you need the variety. And at this point, you can't go wrong either way. But there's a part of me that says you could set up a, a, a an inner circle pinnacle rubber match that might surpass blood and guts. And now how do you do that? I have no fucking clue, by the way. But how do you surpass you know, both blood and guts and stadium stampede? What do you do after that? That's part of me. That that's that's why I'm thinking maybe put but maybe put, put pinnacle over to finish it. 
gave MJF all of the heat again. But it, it's, a, it's, a tough, where it's a pickle. It's a pickle. It's one that I'm glad I don't have to figure out. This is where I'm glad I don't have to be Tony Khan. Now, this the Wikipedia has uh, a to be determined for the AEW uh, for the TNT Championship, but it's Miro or Dante Martin versus Lance Archer. Let's not kid ourselves. It's fuck got to be fucking Miro versus Lance come Archer on. for the TNT title. Let's Dante not. Martin. Come on, Dante Martin. He's a he's a spry young up and comer. Miro oh, is in God. beast mode. Do you want? Do you? Outside of Lance Archer and another or another Hoss, do you actually see and see someone as scrawny as Dante Martin survive, much less win against Miro? Be honest. He's got he's got Be the honest. energy. He's got the Be attitude. Honest. He's 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 in there. He's like yeah. He's got the look. He's got the look. He's got the look. <laughs> Na, 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 He's got the look. Bang, 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 bang. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, uh, we have aged ourselves. You are welcome. Uh, that song no. still plays on the radio These to this day. What are you talking about? They still play on the radio? Fair enough, but uh, it's in the classic hits department, to be fair. All right, so... I think Miro it's versus Land Charger, which is what the master are building up anyway, so... Ooh. And I think that should Miro pull off the miraculous task of surviving Dante Martin. Don't fuck around, dude. You know it's a squash match at this point. If he's able to survive that her Herculean task, <laughs> then I think he could defeat Lance Archer. By the way, an update on the poll. It's over 67% of the people think Nick Aldis will be the mystery man in the Casino Battle Royal. I, and I can't it's a tie. That. It's 17% tie that between Brian joke. Danielson and Paul White. Paul White and Brian Danielson are the serious ones, and possibly Nick Gage. I put Nick Aldis in the Denver Broncos, and there is a joke. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I see. I see Miro retaining, but it's it. This is going to be a hoss fight, knockdown, drag out. Me ready for Sunday for that match. I ready for a house fight! Bum 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 I'm not ready for a house fight. I'm not ready for football anymore. <laughs> Hangman Page versus Brian Cage. Uh, featuring Team Taz one on one. Page versus Cage. No Christian involved in this one, folks. I think Page gets his victory back here, and he starts his elevation back up to becoming the heavyweight champion of the world. Makes sense to me. Okay, Cage got Cage got a big win. We're, we're, they're going to build to a rubber anyway, so it only makes sense to put put a win on Adam Page. All right, now I opened my can of of fizzy water here. Let me get it. Let me get a sip because uh, there's a list. Because you know what's up here. It's Casino Battle Royal for a uh, shot Casino at the Battle AW. Royale for a future AEW World Championship match. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, indeed. Here is the list of people as included. Cody Rhodes. Yes, for the AEW World title. I am I am way I am way up there. I am so sorry. It starts with Christian Cage. I do apologize. Tis a botch. Take a shot. Christian Cage, Matt Seidel, Powerhouse, The Scariest Man Alive, Hobbs, Penta El Zamiedo, Jungle Boy, Matt Hardy, Mark Quinn, Isaiah Cassidy, The Blade, Evil Uno, Colt Cabana, Preston Tan Vance, Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman Jr., Max Caster, Anthony Bowens, QT Marshall, Nick Camarado, Dustin Rhodes, Lee Johnson, and an opponent or opponents to be announced. There are some people thinking it could be the big schmoz because he is doing Le Commentelli. So you, you're thinking big big show Paul White? There are some people who are thinking that because he's going to be doing commentary specifically for this match. Maybe, maybe. Uh, Nick, all this is, 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 a, is a, you know, as a surprise, excuse me, makes sense. Daniel Bryan, I'm surprised no one else has been voting for Bryan, actually. 
for Brian Danielson. I just want to hear a final countdown again. As do I. As do I. I don't know. I mean, if it's if it, I don't I don't think the winner I don't think the debuting entity will be winning the battle royal. I think it's I think, I think both- it might be between Christian Cage. Hmm. For a whole time match, I could see either Christian Cage or Jungle Boy. Yeah. Because obviously whoever wins here is not going to win the world title. Yeah, this will be a, a build up to, to, to build up the final boss kind of match, which hey, Jungle Boy or Christian Cage, either way, you got a good match on your hands. I'm not saying this is not the not a knock on anybody at this point. That uh, would be good for if you want to get that young up and comer who comes really close but can't quite get it done. That's Jungle Boy right there. Christian Cage is is one of those get 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 the rub the veteran rub, so to speak. So, so either I, way is a good win is, is a good is a good and now we get the Cody Rhodes taking on Anthony Ogogo. It's a singles match. It's a grudge match. Uh, this, I think we we talked about this one uh, quite a bit last week with mm-hmm. Shintaro Curl, and he noted that you know we haven't seen anything really from Ogogo outside of a few jabs and a few things here and there, but nothing really concrete outside. of what we'll finally be able to get to see in this match. This is going to be a very interesting matchup simply because Cody Rhodes has developed a reputation to build up new stars in rank to, to, to give people the, the look of he is a future star. This is he's done that with Darby Allen. He's done that with Brody Lee very effectively. This um, it, it's a tall order. From from what little we've seen of Anthony Agogo, it is a tall order, but we'll see. I, I obviously I, I I think I see Cody Rhodes winning, but I, if you wanted to put over Anthony Agogo and put him over in a way that he wins, I I be I'd be fine with that. Yeah, I think that if they really want to build Agogo up here, they'll have him win by knockout. JC in the chat, the Cody- WWE New Japan stuff makes Brian unlikely for AEW. Nothing's been signed. Like all we have is is alleged of is is a legit an alleged agreement or an, or an agreement on terms being discussed. We'll get to that in a few minutes, but I still think Brian Danielson might just go for it for for AEW. But that's another story for another day. Yeah, um, go ahead. And turn to JC in the chat. If Cody was going to put a go go over, would he have brought back the American Dream? Yes, just to put more heat on a go go. It it makes sense. There's there's a pop of the American Dream, Cody Rhodes. You'll he'll get that pop. Uh, so will Riho, so will Hikaru Shida in the next match, obviously. But this is this is one of those if you want to if you want to fast track someone to get some good heat on them, beating the American Dream makes sense, and it puts a little bit of clout on QT and his uh, in his faction. QT lost pretty decisively. And the previous encounter he had with Cody. He needs to win. The The faction needs to win. A go-go would, could use a big win. You'll be able to brag about this forever. He knocked out Cody Rhodes. And you could still have Cody fight valiantly. And you could still, like, work around the psychology of him constantly avoiding the strikes. You know, with him constantly watching all of Ogogo's matches, he's able to avoid every strike. And this frustrates Ogogo to where he actually has to start wrestling. And so right at the end, pow, one last strike. I have nowhere. This this is literally how the match could go, and we we we'd be happy with that match. Actually, we'd be happy with that match. Actually, we would be fine. Yep. Sometimes the best things are simple. Yeah. Hopefully that's what happens. Uh, Hikaru Shida, uh, who caught the dad. Hikaru Shida, speaking of taking on Doctor Britt Baker, DMD for the women's championship of AEW. Of course, Shida wanted to wrestle in front of a sold out crowd. As women's champion, she's gonna get that at Daly's place. Put belt on, and one full year as women's champion. By the way, this ought to be applauded. Golf clap, not sarcastic. Actual golf clap. Put the belt on DMD. Put put the yeah, belt on the doc. Yeah, I mean. Hot oh, stuff. Your car she is currently on day three sixty seven. She'll be on 69, 369. 
Nice. Nice on Sunday. So that's a long reign. It was a it was a good reign. She did her job. She's she's getting what she wants. Dr. Britt Baker is, is a hot commodity right now. You could you could sell the rematch on Dynamite if you want. Dr. Britt Baker's my pick. Can't disagree with that. And in the main event, brother, Kenny Omega defends the uh, AEW Heavyweight Championship of the World against both Orange Cassidy and Pac three-way world championship. It's a, it's a triple threat, so first pin wins. This could be goddamn good. This could be an instant classic. Because, yeah, Kenny Omega, one of the greatest in the world. You got Pac, who's one of the greatest in the world. You got Orange Cassidy, who has an underrated amount of talent. Underrated around the amount of talent. You could calm people down a little bit after the pops to get the, to get the kicks in, get the taha in, and then 10 minutes in, Boom. Knock down, drag out, let's go. Uh, he wrestled one of the my favorite matches of all time back in Shinkara when he was Fire Ant, and he wrestled, I believe it was Vin Gerard for the Young Lions Cup. Yeah. And this was over a decade ago. So I should tell you how much seasoning this guy has. He is as much of a veteran as the rest of the, these guys in the match. There's going to be a lot of people turned off by Orange Cassidy, but by the end of the night, hopefully... There will there will be awesome sauce, and I of course expect Kenny to retain. Yeah, this is this is obviously and a triple threat. Usually, it's either good to get a good a baby face a surprise win or to get the, get a, a, the heel to be the the steal the steal the win from the guy who just went landed a finisher. Yep, yep, we've seen that happen once or twice over the years. Simple but effective. <laughs> Yep, once again, sometimes in pro wrestling, the simplest stuff works. Because it just, you see it, it happens, you're able to register it, and that's all you need. You don't always need to twist things around, try to do all these convoluted things that Vince McMahon likes to do. There you go. And that's the show, folks. That is 10 matches. We are not ten going matches. to bed until midnight. Do you realize that? Well, it's ten matches, including the pre-show, so it's yeah. nine matches for the main show. Still. It's going to be very interesting. That being said, uh, we're, we're done early on this one. Actually, no, we do have news. <laughs> No, 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 no clips. No, no extra fluff. No, no, no uh, music in the background. Nope. No, we're going straight to the news. All right. First thing oh I want to talk boy. about. Oh boy! Oh boy! First thing I want to talk about. Dark side of the ring, the ultimate warrior. This is a very interesting thing. This is practically a companion piece to the WWE A and E documentary. I which... didn't see that one, but I did see this. One I'm thing sorry. to know: I did not see the A and E documentary, but I did see this. No, right. I've seen the A and E documentary. I felt that they went. Now obviously, there was this part fluff piece, but when it came to the uh, to to uh, Warriors' um, eccentricities outside of the ring, especially after the world title, the failed the world title run, yeah, uh, they 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 did not hold held back. They did not hold back, but at the same time, they were like apologetic in a sense. Uh, if you watch the, the documentary, that it's obviously it's WWE's version of events. But in a way that is, you know, polite to to Warriors' uh, legacy, I get the feeling that th- this is the un unvar- the dark side of the ring version is ungoddamn varnished. Very much so. They didn't hold back at all. Um, first off, they had everyone say that when Warrior got into the business, he will Jr. was quoted as saying, on as one of the talk he had saying that he had there has never been a wrestler with less talent than him. Damn. He yeah, didn't hold back. He fucking buried him during this whole thing. And uh, by the way, they brought up Destrucity. Oh, I've seen the meme. Jim Ross is a meme. What the fuck is Destrucity? I know what you're probably thinking to yourselves. What the fuck is Destrucity? <laughs> <laughs> See, they had to explain what Destrucity was in the Warrior comics and just, oh, all of that. 
And Jake Robertson hold back saying that for decades he wanted to murder him because he was about to get a world title run against Warrior, and then Warrior fucked that up. Oh. And Warrior talked about how he always wanted to be world champion. He waited so long for that moment. And, of course, Warrior, Warrior did it up because he had a huge ego. From those moments he got into wrestling, apparently he had a huge ego. Which makes sense, all you things considered. And, of course, they did not shy away from his homophobia and racism. They put it on full screen, all the quotes, for you to read them. By the, way, so talk- by the way, by the way, I don't know if we got WWE New Japan, but it's it's been reported. By, it's in uh, there. Good. We'll get that's because it's just been brought up by a uh, Bleacher Report, so it's spreading around, and I'm scared. We'll get to that, obviously. Let's get back to Ultimate Warrior. All right, so back to Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, so they put the they let like the homophobia and racism stuff. So put all, all the quotes on screen for you to read individually. They would bring it up in the year that it was that it happened. Oh, the homophobia. Like, yeah, this was brought up in the AEW documentary as well. Did they His, bring up uh, the racism. Did they bring up the racism? I don't think he, they did, but uh, yeah, they I believe a, it was implied. I believe it was. It may have been implied. They put up a quote from Warrior where he was talking shit about black people and using some very racist terminology. <whistles> you not know that much. Thank you, Dark Side. So you're just you're just learning a whole bunch of new reasons to not like Warrior if you watch this. If you didn't like him then, you hate him now. Yeah, especially because, like, until he they get to the point where he dies, nobody's got a kind word to say about him. Because up until, like, he came to the uh, Hall of Fame ceremony, he apparently did try to do his best to make up to everyone. But, you know, not going to blame anyone for still not liking him after all the stupid shit he said. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, by the way, um... But the next thing on my list actually is WWE in New Japan. If so, yeah, here, here, um, here, this popped up out of goddamn nowhere. All right, read it. No, 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 you read it. That's the same thing. It's Bleacher Report oh. saying that they're uh, reporting. Uh, there is a reported, alleged discussion between a- between WWE and New Japan for Wasley and Renico. We're seeing a-, 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 a and E. Shut up. Anyway. So, uh, okay, I AC, to, actually, to, JC's got it, the, got the quote from PW Insider. So, in an update, PW Insider adds that the main crux of the talks had to do, do with, uh, with the potential of Daniel Bryan being able to work some dates in New Japan. The report also stated that talks have been going on for several months and have confirmed sources in both companies. It has also been noted that New Japan has requested Tanahashi versus John Hiroshi Tanahashi versus John Cena as a potential mega card match. The belief is Cena will end up teaming with Nakamura against Randy Orton and Hiroshi Tanahashi. Brian versus Okada is the golden get is the golden uh, is the golden match. Oh, there was a character limit. He said, "Yeah," but. uh I'll let you read what I wrote. Maybe in the Golden Goose match, as both teams of in negotiations agree, Okada and Brian would be willing to job in order to have a classic match. Thank you, JC. Here's can what you, I. By the way, can you state your source, just out of curiosity, just uh, just so we could properly uh, give people uh, the, the right uh, quote I there? He, I believe he quoted that from PW Insider. Yeah, this was from PW Insider, but he probably he obviously got it from from another source. I want to make sure that that other source is credited, of course. So, yeah, Vince is trying to, to sign up a, a, a big deal with New Japan so they could fu- he could fuck over AEW. Here's what I have written down here. NJPW plus WWE is not going to happen. How so, t Go ahead, floor is yours. <laughs> yeah, that, that's all. It's just, it's not going to happen because... WWE always feels themselves to be above the rest. They don't want to work on equal footing with anyone. Anyone. They don't give a fuck about any requests. They don't give a shit who Tanahashi is or anyone or Okada or Suzuki or anyone on that roster. They don't care because they, they see don't. themselves 
as above pro wrestling. They see NJPW as just a wrestling promotion, whereas we in WWE, we're an entertainment promotion. We have movies. We have wrestlers in all these guest starring roles on television. We have stars in all these talk shows and all this other stuff. So I don't see this happening. Because this is clearly, to me, I'm just seeing this as them trying to create yet another NXT Japan. Because they tried to do this a few years ago, they failed. And I don't see this happening here. And JC says he got that quote from the pro wrestling thread on the CBR forums. All right. Thank you very much. And, and uh, Michelle Vince opening the forbidden door. Never. Yeah, I am skeptical. I saw that. I'm like, oh, don't, don't fuck that up just because you want to keep Daniel Bryan. You had your shot, fuckers. In fact, you had him for a while. You had him as WWE champion. If you don't want to sign, don't sign him. And we also have to point out that earlier today, Tony Khan did a promo for a AEW's official Twitter account where he shot on Nick Khan pretty hard. I seen the video, folks. He is not kidding. He literally calls out Nick Khan by name and WWE saying, you know, you guys have been working pretty hard on this for two months. Well, in the past two weeks, I've had Yuji Nagata, Red Narita, and Rocky Romero on, on AEW television. And had John Moxley defend the IWGP US title successfully on American television. And have future plans with the title and New Japan going forward. And then he ends it by saying, there's only room for one con in wrestling. And that's Nick. And that's Tony Khan. Not yeah, a con man. Up from there. <laughs> yeah. Not a con man from Connecticut. There, that's the line. That's a shoot, brah. So it's obvious that AEW will continue whatever relationship they have with New Japan, if there is one. I believe there is because Moxley is still U.S. champion. For as yep. long as he has that belt, there's going to be a relationship. Pretty much. And WWE is not going to want to work with AEW. They, they're always going to want exclusive working relationships just like they did with evolve just like they did with a whole bunch of indie scenes in the uk just like they want to do also in mexico pretty much i mean there's nothing else to add here yes this is a big deal and yes it's a big rumor because wwe wants just wants brian back but brian i think it legitimately might be done going hey look i, I don't yes i want to wrestle but i want part-time if you can't give me part-time i'll go somewhere else and speaking of going somewhere else, Adnan Verk is going somewhere else as, after seven weeks, was shown the door. This was a, a, a quote, mutual agreement. Uh, Verk say, quoted saying other, other, the travel and his other commitments uh, as, as the reason for, for the split. Apparently, so the, the real deal going on is both WWE and Verk came together after that Raw and went, yeah, this ain't working. Let's shake hands and split. Yeah, because Adnan Verk didn't know anything about wrestling. And Brian Alvarez had an epic rant on that. Hello? Yeah, and I, you don't know wrestling. Oh, oh, I love, I, and I love this. Same week, they let go of Adnan Verk. Hey, we need a new, we need a new head guy for Raw. What about that Tom Phillips go guy? Eh, release two. Let's get an MMA guy. An MMA guy who's not even a play-by-play -play guy. Do you see why Tita and I don't watch that horse shit on Monday anymore? That's not Monday Night Raw. What, what they call it Raw? I call it horse shit. I, I don't know what they're thinking here. Like the only thing they're thinking is they is the one thing that Vince has always won. Vince is desperate for the credibility. He dies for credibility with the elites. Pun not intended. But when it comes to like the elitists, he wants to be up in there. Who wants to be elite with them? But they don't like him. They don't like wrestling. He tries to rebrand his wrestling show as a non-wrestling show. They see past the bullshit. They see it as a wrestling show. They don't like wrestling. They don't take Vince seriously. And they never fucking will. But that doesn't stop Vince. He's going to hire a whole bunch of these quote-unquote professionals to try to 
unprofessional wrestling to show up, but it's not going to work because in order to do play-by-play for a wrestling show, you have to be aware of what pro wrestling is. You have to be aware of its history. No. The character, what do you think Mar Ronaldo was when they first when he when they did the brand split and brought him in? Mar Ronaldo was a is a credible MMA and boxing uh, journalist and announcer. I guarantee you that's why he got the gig. But what made him work is the fact that he is a massive fan of pro wrestling. He's been a fan of pro wrestling. He's the exception to the life. rule, to be fair. But that that's another example of W of Vince going for the mainstream clout. This is this is what it is. Vince is trying to be cool. AEW is just hanging out over there, you know, being cool. Well, yeah. And it's really, really disappointing because they don't need to do that because all they need to do is get an announcer, and if they want this credible announcer, fine, you can send him to NXT, have him learn up there. Uh oh. Did he we get knocked off here? His work. He can learn how to. I hope not. Uh oh. I think we're back. Oh, you... no. Okay. Only some lost frames and some derpage. All right. God so, anyway. <laughs> all right, let me. Let me restart my point then. Yeah. If they're really hell bent on getting this Jimmy John, whatever the fuck from MMA, Jimmy Smith play by or Jimmy Smiths or something like that, it doesn't matter what this Mark's fray. It doesn't matter what your name is. Thank you. I'm like, you you have NXT. I know that you could say, well, he was on NXT with Sam Roberts pre-show. There's a difference. Very difference between a pre-show and. Having to carry a three-hour weekly show, he's gonna have to carry that show on his own essentially because he's gonna have to be the guy that tells the story to the fans. And just like with Adnan Verk, Corey Graves and Byron Saxon are gonna have to carry the slack. And I feel so bad for them because they are so good at their jobs. They got so good chemistry together to where I wanted to honestly just make it Corey Graves and Byron Saxton. They've already got a repertoire they've working together for like, what, five, six years at this point? They don't get it, and they've lost us, and they keep, and it's it's constant it, 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 declining returns. You're out of touch. You're out, You're of, out of time. Buckle out of my head when you out of that. And so, I'm, I don't know the lyrics. <laughs> but you get the idea. Yeah, yeah. You, you get you get the point we're trying to say is why why does Vince have to make it so fucking complicated? It's so simple. Just get a commentator that knows about wrestling to call the wrestling. And if they're so like I said, if they're so desperate to get these legitimate sports analysts to do their play by play. Send them to NXT first, at least, so that way they can learn. They can learn about how wrestling is done. They can learn about the structure of the matches. They can learn about the high spots, the finishes. They can learn about the characters and how to call the characters and how to get this all the different story stuff across the WWE way that they want it. Instead of having to learn on the fly on Raw, which is supposed to be the place where the biggest stars are. We could spend all night talking about this. This is as much I want to put over those. I, this is as far as I'm going to put over WWE this week. And the fact they also fired Tom Phillips, who is exactly who they needed for this spot. Because when you think about a WWE style announcer, he is the perfect face and voice for that brand. He is. And he was for a while. And then Nick Khan came in and conned it all up. Because Anon Verk was a Nick Khan move, and it really feels like he's now sort of leading that same sort of thing where he wants his fr- his sports analyst friends in the job. And, oh, boy, 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 this could be a rough little time. Anyone... You know, I was going to say anyone know Nick Khan. I'm like, no, I don't want it. That, that, no. I do not want to have Vince McMahon screaming in my goddamn ear every Monday night. No, no, no. No, thank you. No, thanks. Nada. Next. 
And I only have one last bit of news tonight. It's a short show, to be fair. Last bit of news is the fact that Joey Janela and Sony Kiss have broken up as a tag team. Aww. So, uh, during, after a uh, match on AEW Dark, Sonny, Sonny Kiss was getting beat down by Team Taz, and Joey Janela just walks up to the ramp, and you think, oh, he's going to come out here. He's going to get in the ring. He's going to save his tag team partner. But he just stares. He looks conflicted, and he walks away. This is the end. And, of course, tonight is his first night's official heel against the hung man, Adam Page. Ooh, okay. So he's turning heel again. Okay. He has to be, I, I assume, after leaving Sonny Kiss to get beaten up like that. Makes me a sad, sad boy. And then he will be a bad, bad boy again. Even more so. That's a thing. And, and that's all the news I have this week, unless you have something you'd like to offer as well. I, th I think the New Japan thing was the big one I wanted to add. If there's anyone I want to add something in the chat, uh, we could definitely discuss it while we discuss uh, these winners and losers, of course. I'd like to get my loser out to... WWE's announced teams. They deserve so much better than just giving whatever random sports analyst gets thrown their way. After all the hours of work they put in, the years of work they put in, Byron and Corey Graves deserve better than this. I know we like to rag on Byron, but he is a fucking professional. Corey's a good, good announcer. He's just being fed BS. Yeah, Corey's a great color commentator. Byron is a good... Could actually be a good play-by-play -play guy. He could be. Let's try it out. Byron and Corey. Fucking A. Come on. Good work. You got nothing to lose. But of course they're not going to try it because they secretly hate me. Me specifically. No, this is corporate shit at this point. We need corporate answers when the simple one would do better for business. But that's corporate bullshit for you. And what do you got, Matty J? Speaking of the corporate bullshit, yeah, I got WWE in there. Who, who, who to thunk it, right? Uh, no, for obvious reasons, the Anand Verk thing, firing him after seven weeks, and then bringing in another guy that's going to lose his job in seven weeks. You watch, you know I'm right. I'm, I'm hoping for the best with Jimmy Smith because I want to turn to. Dude, I want to tune into money it's, in the bank. It's the 2020. It, it, it's going to become the 2021 equivalent of this three week push. I want to turn into like tune into Hell in a Cell or Money in the Bank and hear really bad commentary, like even worse than usual, because even some of the best commentators can only do so well with what they're being fed. So to hear it now done badly is just, ugh. Look, at this point, I'm I, I'm, I'm sorry to be cynical, but what better chance does he does he have? You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. And of course, all the other releases. Some of them were legitimate, by the way. I believe yeah, this like is the week the, we let go of uh, Velveteen Dream. No, this was last week, so we don't have to worry about that that klutz. Um, let's see what happened this week. Uh, the head of their movie department got released. Yeah, no, they, yeah, a lot of shakeups. They're trying to do. They're trying to uh, really re reduce redundancies, which I guess, but you know. Yeah, Mike oh, Schell says they're going through Mike Schell, they're going through commentators like Jeopardy go, is going through hosts. Fair, but I'm like at the same time that they're guest hosts. They say they're going to be guest hosts. You know. Yeah, these commentators are supposed to be a little bit more permanent. A little bit, a little bit. Uh, let's do winners. I, I, you know. JC says the Rock is playing crypto. The dog. Moving right along. Okay, um, I get my winners to. I guess I get my winners to uh, Mr. Jim Ross for being the, one of the most entertaining parts of that eight, that <laughs> Ultimate Warrior Dark Side of the Ring episode. All right, okay, <laughs> and of course, gotta give one to Tony Khan for that ballsy promo. That promo, that shoot promo, call it what it is, it's a shoot. And that's about it for the time being. I'm gonna give a winner to Adnan Verk. 
Look, he tried. He tried. Seven weeks. He lasted seven weeks. Some of us probably wouldn't last a minute in that commentary booth. And he tried. He tried. He threw, he threw in some zingers. He, he did okay. It just didn't work out. Kudos. Uh, w. Morrissey. Folks, uh, if we had Clip of the Week, he had Clip of the Week last night. Uh, last night, that promo. Good Lord. His best one ever to date. Uh, AEW, for all the obvious reasons, including Tony Khan's uh, shoot. And, of course... OSW Review. They released uh, the AEW Revolution uh, Review, episode 99, uh, to, to the public today. They did premiered. I got to watch it. And uh, they, 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 they did it. It, it. It's an OSW episode on AEW. Uh, fun? We're the watch. I will not spoil. <laughs> By the way, also, they have episode 100. And the way they were doing uh, post- Lex Express arc was they did a couple of things and then they did uh, Jay's choice, OOC's choice, and then V1's choice. And uh, the AEW Revolution was V1's uh, uh, choice. And episode 100, fans choose it. Uh, Vote.oswreview.com is where you go. And the poll says, what should OSW 100 be? Hogan and TNA, New World Order, review old matches from early OSW review episodes. We're talking the first 10, 15 episodes. Top of the list, Heroes of Wrestling. If Heroes of Wrestling wins, may God have mercy on their souls. That's that's a bad that is a notoriously bad show, and everyone has said everything. TW, we were talking about that earlier. A lot of people have said a lot of bad things. A lot of people have said enough things. This is well worn territory, but we have never heard three three Irishmen roast the crap out of it. There there is an interest in that. That are Hogan and TNA because it's it's Hulk Hogan. You know they need to roast Hogan again. Too sweet me on that. <laughs> Folks, if you don't know, now you mo. <laughs> Oh, that, we gotta do it right. Mo, 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 mo. Simpsons reference turned into OSW ref reference because of Mo of Met on the Mission. Mo, mo, mo. <laughs> that was two minutes of us way up doing that. By the way, <laughs> gotta waste our time somehow. Hey, you, you know what? We could go off air early. I don't mind. <laughs> We've done what we gotta do. All we got to do is plug our stuff. At this point. <laughs> Tina, plug away at this. <laughs> yep, this subscribe one. to my YouTube channel. A new video is a little bit start going up sometime in early July. However, if you want to see any of season two early, patreon.com slash TWK reviews. That's patreon.com slash TWK reviews. And, of course, yeah, Shin's book, New World, Amazon.com. Buy it. You can get it either a paperback or digital. I got digital. Here's a good book. You should watch. You should read it. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, his YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash C slash Maxicorn. He always does stuff there. Uh, I am on the TikTok. TikTok. Uh, so, uh, no. At Matty J3. Uh, Matty JWC with... Uh, 
of course, everyone else on Twitter at MattyJ316, at TABK Official, and at Shin Tiger Curl. Uh, my tip chart, paypal.me slash MattyJ316. Donations are optional, but always welcome. And uh, at this point, you may, you may, uh, you may now flip. I guess we're we're done. We're we're gonna say goodbye on this one. Shin will be back up with us next week to review the show, of course. Uh, uh, AW uh, AW double or nothing. And uh, that, that's it. Enjoy enjoy dynamite, folks. <laughs> enjoy a full sellout crowd again. This it's, it'll have been almost a year and a half. Since that happened, by the way, and they anticipate a full, full out, sold out crowd. They got the stage show, the stage, uh, the the stage seats, one little tunnel instead of the heel and face tunnel. This is, uh, this will be a thing. This will be a thing. Enjoy it. <laughs> but that's it, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of everybody, including TWK. Until next time, this is TWK to your reviews. Tell me to enjoy some dynamite! We're going to go at least no TRL this week. Yeah, we're going to a two week uh, format every two weeks, and this week is a no Tokerus Live, so. And even if there was, uh, I bought the fucking pay per view on the strength of Miro versus. Lance Archer, so you goddamn right there is no to- there is no Toka Riffs Live this week. But next week we're we're there, we're gonna be do- doing the thing with the new with the new format, which you know went gangbusters by the way. You know, we had fun. Uh folks, the new metal here we're, we're riffing in the second half. Laugh riot, you're gonna love it. Manage and remind you to help professional wrestling support your independent promotion as soon as possible. Enjoy AEW Dynamite and all that stuff. Folks, have a good one. Have a safe one. Enjoy Double or Nothing Weekend. Bye, everybody. Bye. It was very split what people thought of this Ultimate Warrior documentary. But for whatever reason, everybody wanted us to review it here on the show. So I guess we're going to well, review it here on the show. He was, in fact, a complicated, polarizing man. Well, so I guess he, that's fitting. He definitely was. I was like Shaft. He is nothing like Shaft. <laughs> Shaft? Yeah, he's a complicated man, but nobody loves him like his woman. God damn, you're right. He's like Shaft. No, he's not like Shaft, but I mean, that line is like the warrior. But no, he is not like Shaft. Uh, he was not a black private dick who's a sex machine for all the chicks. That's true. Uh-huh.